The single most important difference between a prokaryote and a eukaryote is that a prokaryote does not have a nucleus. It does not have a membrane-bound organelle that contains the genetic information, the DNA, like the eukaryotic organism does. In fact, all prokaryotes lack any membrane-bound organelle, and this includes organelles such as the mitochondria, the Golgi apparatus, the endoplasmic reticulum, and so so forth. All these membrane-bound organelles that are found in eukaryotes are not found in prokaryotes. So what exactly is the structure of a prokaryotic organism? So in this lecture we're going to briefly discuss the general structure of the prokaryotic organism. We're going to examine some of the shapes of our prokaryotes and then we'll briefly discuss the major differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So let's begin with the structure. Now all prokaryotic organisms are enclosed in a cell wall and the cell wall basically protects our cell, the organism, from the outside environment. We also have something called the cell membrane which is basically responsible in cell transport. Now within our prokaryotic cell we have a region that contains our DNA, our genetic information and this region is called the nucleoid or the nucleoid region. Now the nucleoid region is not the nucleus. The nucleoid region does not have a membrane like our nucleus does inside the eukaryotic cell. So usually inside a prokaryotic cell we basically have a single double-stranded circular DNA that is shown in brown. It basically contains our genes that code for the proteins that exist and function within our prokaryotic cell. Now notice within this region we not only have this large DNA we also have a small DNA and this small DNA is known as as the plasmid and the plasmid usually contains several types of important genes and these genes are usually responsible for giving the prokaryotic organism resistance to drugs. Now our plasmids replicate independently of our large DNA. In fact, our plasmids can replicate and then can pass down to other prokaryotic organisms and other prokaryotic organisms that do not have resistance can gain resistance via this process. So basically we have small hair-like appendages labeled by five. So these appendages, which are known as pili, and the pili are responsible responsible for connecting, for bridging two or more organisms together to basically transfer that replicated uh, plasmid structure. Now, prokaryotic organisms also contain structures called ribosomes, just like eukaryotes do. But the types of ribosomes, the structure itself, is different in the two types of organisms, as we'll see in just a moment. The ribosomes is basically the location where we synthesize our proteins. Now finally, we also have a structure known as the flagella or the flagellum. And the flagella is basically the structure that allows our organism to move. Now we're going to discuss this in a future lecture, but the flagella is different than the flagella that is found in eukaryotes. So the type of protein that our flagella is composed of inside prokaryotes is different than in eukaryotes. Now, prokaryotic organisms include two types of domains. We have bacteria and we also have archaea. So basically, archaea are single-celled organisms that include those organisms that are capable of living in very harsh and hostile environments, such as very hot temperatures, very high or very low pH, very high acidity, very salty, and so forth. So those organisms that can live in very hostile environments usually fall into a domain known as 
are key and these are the organisms we call prokaryotes. So we have bacteria and we have these. Now what exactly are the different types of sh uh, shapes of our prokaryotic organisms? So there are three major shapes that prokaryotic organisms can basically have. So they can either be round which is basically our coxy. So coxy means we have a round shape. We can have our bacilli which is the, which is basically this rod like shape which is this organism we drew in this diagram here and we can also have a spiral like shape a helical shape as shown and this is known as the spirilla so the spirilla our bacilli and our coxy these are the different types of shapes that our prokaryotic organisms can take now, what exactly are the some of the differences that we should know between prokaryotic organisms and our eukaryotic organisms? So as we discussed earlier, prokaryotes have two domains. We have bacteria and archaea. Eukaryotes are animals, plants, protists, and fungi. Now prokaryotes do not have a nucleus. In fact, they do not have any membrane-bound organelle whatsoever. However, eukaryotes do have a nucleus and they do contain membrane-bound organelles such as the mitochondria or the endoplasm reticulum. Now prokaryotes are mostly unicellular but some multicellular uh, prokaryotes do in fact exist while eukaryotes come in both types. We have unicellular and multicellular uh, eukaryotes as we'll see in a future lecture. Now all prokaryotes have cell walls but not all eukaryotes have cell walls for example plants do have cell walls but we humans do not have any cell walls animals do not have cell walls around our cell now what are the different types of ribosomes that exist between prokaryotes and eukaryotes? So earlier I mentioned that all the prokaryotic organisms do in fact have ribosomes that synthesize proteins. The type of units that the ribosomes consist of are different in prokaryotic organisms and eukaryotic organisms. So within prokaryotes we have the 30S and the 50S subunits while in the eukaryotic organisms we have the 40S and the 60S subunits that compose our ribosomes. And finally, our uh, plasmids are very common within prokaryotic organisms, but although plasmids do exist within eukaryotic organisms, they are actually very rare. So these are some of the differences, the major differences that exist within our prokaryotes and eukaryotes.